All right. This is going to be my my interpretation of Wild Nights by Emily Dickinson. So let me just get everything here. All right. So this is the original poem, and it's obviously titled Wild Nights. And just as a general, you know, overview, what jumps out to me immediately is obviously the capitalized words. So we've got heart and compass, chart, um, Eden, C. So these are probably going to be some words to pay attention to as the reading goes on. But first, I just want to take it apart kind of line by line. So there's wild nights. Okay, that's, you know, that's pretty basic. Um, were I with thee. So this were here, were here is kind of a hypothetical. It's if I were, if I was with thee. So it's something that is not actually happening. But it's it seems to be, from this line, something that the author really desires. So if I was with you, our wild nights would be our luxury. So it would be something that would be a lot of fun, you know, something that you can really enjoy. Then go on to the next stanza. Feudal the winds to a heart in port. This is kind of a, it's an extended, you know, simile sort of, it's extended metaphor. So the winds can't affect, basically, a heart that has settled down. Because in port, you know, that's when a ship has kind of, you know, set anchor, it's it's settled down. So a heart that has, you know, found its course, it's settled down, you know, not it can't really be affected by winds, you know, distractions in life, something like that. Done with the compass, done with the chart. That's just reinforcing that this heart is not going anywhere. It's not going to be using a compass, it's not going to be using a chart. Those are obviously both navigating tools, so it's staying put. Because it's content. Why would it be content? Because if it was with this person, this the, then it would be content. Rowing in Eden, ah, the sea, might I, might I but more tonight in thee. So what you need to know here is Eden is the, uh, la the location where Adam and Eve, Eve lived, and it is often used as paradise, basically, because it, it was paradise. So rowing in Eden, that's basically just, you know, in paradise. It's kind of, it's keeping the metaphor with the sea going. No one's literally rowing in Eden. But if she's basically saying rowing in happiness, uh, contentedness, ah, the sea, might I but more tonight in thee. And when I first read this, I don't know, it kind of seems suggestive, like going to bed with someone. That might sound a little bit weird, but that's immediately what I thought when I read this. Um, so... That's what I think of this. General general overview again. It's kind of a wistful at first, something that this author wishes she could have or he could have. Um, so that's what I think of that poem. Then here is my poem. So first I'll just read it, just to kind of get you guys used to it. Wild nights, wild nights, were I to be free. Chains of dreams, destiny, shackle me to this tree. Inevitable to try, a fish climbing a tree. Change one's stars, how can this be? Like the end in the west, ah, uh, Hades, what might I do today to avoid thee? So first off, I just want to point out that there's no rhyme scheme in her original poem. It's all just completely random uh, rhymes. But there is a there does happen to be a rhyme right here and right here. Um, but so I rhymed this line with this line just to kind of keep it going um, but other than that there's no rhyming so wild nights wild nights where I to be free chains of dreams destiny so I found this line right here this was kind of paradoxical because chains you know that's something that holds you back but dreams dreams are supposed to be motivation you know you get like you have a dream as a kid you get motivated to do something and destiny that's kind of your predetermined fate. So what it seems is that the dreams are holding back this person from what they can be doing, from what they can be doing in life. So shackle, again, that's another term that is really negative. It has a negative connotation to it. Shackle, that's another version of hold, being held back. So this is something 
maybe this person's a goal in life, but their dreams, in a way, are actually holding them back. So we go into the next stanza. Inevitable to try. Again, something holding them back. It's an impossible. A fish climbing a tree. That's it's not possible at all. So that continues with that. Change one's stars. Now this is kind of, this is used to say stars. You know, that's something you actually, you can't really change the stars. So again, changing one's stars is kind of like changing one's fate, changing one's destiny. But it really can't be done, which you see the next line. How can this be? The, so the author in this point is questioning themselves, like, is this even possible? Like the end in the West, the West in Greek culture, I mean, it tended to be where Hades was located, Hades being the underworld, which you see here. And it's also, you know, where the sun sets. So sunsets in the West, that kind of symbolizes the end of, the, of a period or of a cycle. Then you have Hades, that symbolizes death, for sure, as in Greek culture, Hades was death, the underworld. It was not a place where you really wanted to go. What might I do today to avoid the? So what can I do to avoid Hades? And in this case, Hades is being personified because although Hades was a person in Greek culture, in this case, it's being used as a location. And then avoid the, it's saying, what can I do to avoid a location? So here we have someone basically who's trying to avoid death. And what it seems to be is that they're being held back, chained by dreams, shackled to this tree. Uh, they're being held back from what they want to do, and they, they're trying to avoid death in this situation. So some similarities, um, some similarities and differences. With Dickinson's original poem, it's kind of something that it's about a, the author wants wants something but can't really get it, you know, wants to have wild nights in this case. Uh, and in this one, uh, the author is trying to avoid a certain outcome. So in one case, this person is seeking out, you know, a, a good time, a good night. In this case, uh, the author is just trying to avoid what seems to be certain, you know, just the, the everyday life. So in a way, they're both kind of searching out their own way in life. And that's, that's about it.